most beginners are familiar with just one application of voltage regulators while there are many others. Are you familiar with surprising applications of voltage regulators? In this video, I'm going to teach you some interesting applications of DC to DC voltage regulators like this little guy, the L7805, with practical examples, not the usual stuff. After watching this video, you will learn about 5 applications of voltage regulators other than the typical usage of them that everybody knows. And this will make you superior to others in designing circuits. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. Let me start with the definition of a voltage regulator. A voltage regulator is a device that converts voltage levels and keeps the voltage in a circuit at a desirable, fixed and stable the level regardless of fluctuations and variations in input voltage or load conditions. By the way, in this video, whenever I say regulator, I mean any DC to DC voltage regulator. I will bring examples regardless of the part number, but I definitely mean a DC to DC voltage regulator. Anyway, time's up. Let's see the first application. Application number one, providing operating voltages. This application is what I mentioned as the most popular and well-known use of voltage regulators that most newbies know. Suppose that in a project you have to use an MCU operating on 5 volts and there is a load like this DC bulb in your project that must be driven by the microcontroller. If this is a 5 volt bulb and you have a 5 volt adapter like this one to power up the circuit, then it seems okay to continue designing the project because all of these components have the same voltage ratings, it's simple. Now, what if the bulb was a 12 volt DC bulb? In that case, you have to select a 12 volt input voltage to power the DC bulb, but you will no longer be able to provide 5 volts to the MCU. Here is where you can use a voltage regulator to make 5 volts to fit the MCU power pins. This is an L7805 voltage regulator. It can take 12 volts at input and drops it down to 5 volts at output. This is your 12 volt input pin. This is your common ground and this is your 5 volts. You can use this 5 volts to power up the MCU. It is not just a microcontroller that operates on 5 volts, which is a, a popular voltage. You know, 5 volt adapters are everywhere. If you don't believe me, look at your phone charger. But Sometimes we need a special voltage like 4.1 volt to power some special devices like SIM800L module. You can't find an adapter with this voltage, so you have to create it yourself. To do that, we can use voltage regulators. Application number two, creating unusual voltages. Regulators are divided into two main groups according to their output voltage. The first group is uh, regulators with a fixed output voltage. They can provide voltages like 2.5 volts, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, etc. The second group is the regulators with adjustable output voltage. This is L7805 that provides 5 volts and this is AMS1117 2.5 volts which offers 2.5 volts. These are fixed voltage regulators but this one the LM317 is an adjustable voltage regulator. This is the datasheet for LM317. Look at this basic circuit here. There are two resistors here R1 and R2. R1 is a fixed value resistor which is equal to 240 ohms and R2 is a variable resistor. You can change the value of R2 by using this formula to make your desired voltage at output. Of course, the output voltage can't be higher than the input voltage. Another example of where we need an exact and unusual voltage is battery charging circuits. In any portable device, we have a battery, so we need to charge the battery or batteries. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Yes, batteries are extremely sensitive to charge voltage, so we need to apply exact and correct voltage to them to safely charge them. To create the proper voltage, we can use voltage regulators. I mean, you can use a regulator to charge batteries. Now, uh, can you answer this question? 
why I recommend voltage regulators to charge batteries when there are specialized ICs for this purpose? Actually, battery charger ICs like TP4056 are a kind of voltage regulators and in some cases you may come across batteries with specific characteristics that force you to design a custom battery management system. In that case a voltage regulator will be handy. Also you can use a voltage regulator to make a portable adjustable power supply like this one. In one of my previous videos I explained how to make one of these power supplies for yourself. Okay everything seems normal but here is where most newbies stop if you ask them what else a voltage regulator can do in a circuit but don't worry i am here to give you more insights consider the circuit here we are going to control the state of this dc motor using this mcu look both the mcu and the motor are operating on 5 volts most beginners prefer to use the same power supply for the mcu and the motor they think that there is no need for more components to separate the power sources everything seems okay right there is no overhead but they don't realize the hidden killer inside the circuit the noise Look here, when a motor spins, it generates noise and voltage spikes. This is a real disaster for the microcontroller. This will disable the microcontroller, or in the best case, it will disturb the microcontroller. Even though this noise can be removed or decreased by putting a capacitor near the motor, it is recommended to separate the power supply of the motor from the MCU. The easiest way to separate power supplies is to use a voltage regulator. Application number three, noise filtering. One of the most useful features of voltage regulators is their noise filtering capabilities. This means that if noise exists at the input terminal, the voltage regulator will filter it and provide a clean and clear voltage at the output terminal. But before discussing that, I want to introduce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. I'm proud to introduce PCBWay because they are professionals in manufacturing PCBs. They offer wide range of services including PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing and more. By the way, they are celebrating their 10th anniversary and they have many special offers for you like Descent Coupons, Lucky Draw, Exclusive PCBWay Badges, etc. You can click on the Start Now button on top right side of their website to get started. Anyway, let's continue the discussion. Suppose that in this example, you have either a 5 volt motor and a 12 volt motor, meaning you have the option to choose one of them. Also, either 5 volt or 12 volt inputs are available as VCC. Which one would you choose? I said that if the motor is 5 volt, there is no need for a regulator. You can choose the 5 volt input and then use it for both MCU and motor. But the noise generated by the motor will disturb or even disable the MCU. Here, there are several approaches to separate the motor's power supply from the MCU's power supply, but these two are the simplest and most effective ones. In this scenario, I have chosen a 12 volt input voltage and a 12 volt DC motor, and then use a 5 volt regulator to create 5 volt supply needed for the MCU. In this scenario, the noise generated by the motor can't pass the regulator and reach the MCU. The second scenario is this, where the VCC is 12 volts and the DC motor is 5 volts and MCU is operating on 5 volts. Here we have used two separate regulators to provide power supplies for the motor and the MCU separately. Also in this case the regulators will block the noise from reaching the MCU. We have discussed applications of voltage regulators where the regulator has to provide a significant amount of current but in some cases we just need the regulator to provide a steady voltage and there is no need for a high amount of current. Let me explain. Suppose that you need to use a resistive sensor like NTC or LDR in a portable device. Now answer my question. What challenges are we going to face? 
Most resistive sensors are used in this way. They are put in series with a fixed resistor and the supply voltage is applied to the circuit. The voltage here at this junction point is used as the sensor value. Now answer this. Why am I insisting on a portable device? Can you answer this? Portable devices are powered by batteries, right? In a portable device, if you use the battery voltage directly to power the circuit, the sensor value here will be invalid because the voltage here will be affected by charging or discharging the battery. I mean the battery level. Think about it. It is not just the battery voltage. Any voltage fluctuation or noise will be directly transformed into the sensor value. So we have to use a steady voltage to power the circuit to ensure that the sensor value is independent of the source voltage. Application number four, sensor validation. By using a regulator to power up the circuit, we can ensure that the sensor value will not be affected by battery charge level, noise or voltage fluctuations. Here in the circuit, this voltage regulator will ensure that the sensor value here is always valid. Then the value here will be read by the ADC unit of a microcontroller. It is not just NTC, all resistive sensors need a steady voltage to operate accurately. Enjoying the video so far? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to stay updated with future uploads. Thank you. Anyway, I'm going to ask you another question. What voltage level should we use to power up this resistive sensor circuit? That's a good question. Actually, it is not very important what voltage level is used, but there are some considerations. In general, the lower the sensor voltage, the better the performance of the sensor. On the other hand, the sensor voltage has to be lower than the reference voltage. Every ADC unit has a reference voltage. In some MCUs, there is a dedicated pin on the IC that lets us supply the reference voltage needed for the ADC unit to convert the analog voltage to digital numbers. I prefer not to delve into the specifics, but suffice it to say that this reference voltage is utilized in calculating the digital value. Essentially, the ADC compares the sensor voltage to the reference voltage and calculates the digital value value proportionally. Now you got the point, right? The reference voltage is a key parameter in calculating the digital value. So we have to supply a steady and stable value as the reference voltage too. Application number five, making reference voltages. By using a regulator here, we will ensure that the reference voltage is reliable. In most cases, we can use the same regulator for the sensor and the reference voltage at the same time. It is not just sensor voltage. In many scenarios, we need a very precise, steady and reliable voltage. In one of my previous videos, I made a megaphone using two transistors, but the circuit was very sensitive to the VCC voltage. With the barely noticeable changes in the VCC voltage, the circuit would stop working. Let me explain why. In that circuit, we use these resistors R1 and R2 to bias this transistor by providing 0.7 volts biasing voltage here at the base terminal of this transistor. But the problem was to apply the VCC voltage directly to this point. By changing the VCC voltage, the biasing voltage at the base terminal changes and this transistor easily gets out of the active region of operation. Think about it. If the circuit is operating with a battery, it will almost never work because the battery voltage is decreasing over time. So what can we do in situations like this? Application number six, biasing a transistor. It is simple. We can use a fixed, steady and stable voltage provided by a voltage regulator to create the biasing voltage. Now, by putting a regulator here, we can ensure that this transistor will remain in the active region of operation all the time and will not be affected by fluctuations in the VCC. Even if the circuit is powered using a battery, when the battery is charging or discharging or even when the circuit uses a disposable battery. Also, the regulated bias voltage will reduce the shh noise of the amplifier. You know what I am talking about, right? Anyway, we have reached the final moments of this video. 
thanks for watching if you want to join our community and stay updated with new videos don't forget to like and subscribe see you next video